my website right now and download my free course on alternate picking mastery. It contains five essential exercises that will take you to alternate picking mastery faster than you can imagine. And then I've included my method of how to lay out a practice plan in just one to two minutes that will absolutely boost your results like nothing you ever tried before. So go download it right now. It's free. We're talking soloing. Uh, if you're getting started or you're struggling with your soloing, you know a lot of licks and you know your scale shapes, but you just can't get it together. What do you need to focus on as a beginner or a struggling intermediate? Because there are a lot of those, and I was one too. Um, in the first video, go back and watch the previous one if you haven't already done. So we talked about the importance of uh, working with your licks in a special way. So you want to go back and watch that. But if we take the next step and say, what's the next most important uh, principle to focus on if I want to develop as fast as possible? And please note that if you do what we talked about in the first video, you're absolutely going to develop 10 times at, at the rate of everybody else because everybody else is doing the most inefficient thing. If you do also this one, you got the potential in this video, you got the potential of just, you know, Developing so rapidly, it's a joke, but you have to do it. You have to put this stuff into action. So stick with me here. I should say that you should subscribe to this channel, of course, and go check out our Instagram feed. Go sign up on our website, guitarmastery.net, for free jam tracks, uh, a daily one each and every day. And I'm Klaus Levine, uh, and so let's get started. Okay, so what, what do you do? Well. The, the next thing you need to focus on, apart from the first principle, is the, the whole idea of your solo being something that starts in a specific place and ends in another place. When I started out soloing, I was often surprised when the solo was over. So I just looked at that f time frame of soloing as, you know, I just play as many cool licks as I possibly can, and that's my solo. And then I get surprised when the singer starts singing again or when it's over. Most people uh, practice over these long jam tracks, like you know, eight minutes or four minutes or even three, or it's too long because how long is a solo really? It's like one minute. Or if you're playing Pink Floyd and you know you've got a live audience, it might you know be five minutes. But most often we have a finite period of time, and we want to make sense in that period of time. And most people don't know how to do that. And you want to focus on that very. Uh, and be very focused on it. And that's really the secret, because once you start focusing on it, it just dawns on you that, hey, why didn't I do this before? This is so important. And if you do it, it will allow you to play solos that are really together. You won't run out of ideas because you'll know what you're doing. You'll tell a story. You never run out of words in a story, right? You're telling a story. And you're not running out of ideas because it, it's a story. So you're telling it like it happened, right? The same thing goes here. And a story has a beginning and an end. And if you have like, um, let's say we've got that thing going where we got the, the E minor and the G and the D. And we go back here, right? We got that running. We want to watch, we want to look at each and every single loop as one thing. That's one period, period of time. That's one little section. And then we want to stack those so we have four of them, right? So I want to say something in the first little period here. That's the first, and here we go again. That was the second, right? Here's the third. And then the singer comes back in, right? That's what happens. You see what I'm doing? I'm using every single little block, which is basically the whole chord progression returning back to zero. And I'm stacking those. We got, we got one of those, and I play something in that. Then we have a new little section. The next chord progression is the same thing, just repeating itself. And I play something else in that little room. 
and I go on like that until I have four or eight, right? And so every single little thing I'm playing because of what I just played. I'm not playing random stuff in each box. I play something here. Then I might play a variation of it in there. And then I might, you know, take it up one notch and, and play it higher on the neck or, you know, faster or increase intensity because the story is coming to an end in the third box. And then I have my fourth box and I want to make sure I end with a bang on a high note or whatever. And if I look at it in sections like that and I'm actually able to follow them because I, I feel and sense what's going on in the music, then I suddenly it's, it's, it's no problem anymore. I'm not running out of licks. What are you talking about? Because, you know, it's the same league I'm playing four times. It just depends on where it is in the story. It's the same hero in the story that we see in different situations. So let me just try and do that again. Uh, got that E minor, the G, and the D. That's one box, right? And then I start. Let me just start over here. So I'm, I'm starting with one melody. That's my idea, my lick, right? And then I... I'm, I'm changing it, and then I, I want to go... I hear something new now. Repeating the same note. <laughs> Sorry, right? So the whole point here is that that I'm building my solo and I have that uh, I have that connection to the music. I know exactly where I am and I know exactly how. And that helps you in so, on so many levels. And once you can do it, you sound like an absolute pro. You play a couple of notes again, as I said in the pre previous video. You use rhythm, you use those things we talked about. And then you have this concept on top of it that you're practicing with focus. So you become very good at it. That's going to make you an, at a total pro, even though you know one scale shape and you can't play fast and you know only like bending vibrato and you're you know semi good at it. If you can do this that we're talking about, then you're going to you know just elevate yourself ab above everything because this is the actual skill we need to learn in order to be good at this uh, soloing deal here. Um, so how do you practice it? Well, there's a simple principle. You focus more on the music than you focus on what you're playing. In the beginning, when we're practicing solo, and we're all focused on the music, or sorry, on the notes and the licks, and just to make it happen. So you take that down to a simple, and this is a really fast process once you start doing it. You take it down to the simplest, just one note. So you can have as much focus as you need on the music in order to, for you to hear it actually pass by in the background, right? Because if you don't do that, you're just gonna be caught up in the notes and forget about the music, right? So you you invert that, you turn that around, and then you start actually being more focused on music by going. Okay, and here comes the next. And here comes the next, let me pick another note. Right? So you focus on that, and then gradually you can, st it happens naturally, you can start playing more and more advanced stuff over here because it gets into your body that, that natural feeling of the period of, of what does four bars look like, what does eight bars feel like, right? And in the beginning, you can actually play something that's very illustrative of, of, of the uh, chords. So, and the period, right? So you can play like... Right? And then play something that really emphasizes... Right? So you can really hear in what you're playing that you know what's going on. This then develops into a total freedom of just being able to hover around or above this music and just you never lose the, 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 your place because you've been practicing this from the bottom up by having focus on the music and then not playing anything more complex than you can you know, stay with that focus. That focus then becomes automatic in your body and you don't have to think about it anymore.
right? You don't have to think about it anymore. It's the most amazing thing, but you have that structure to what you do and you don't lose your place because it's in your body. And the key is to focus more on the music, almost exclusively in the beginning, as you can, and then play something very simple. And then naturally, you just you, you move your focus from the music to the notes you're playing. And that happens as you gain more freedom, as it becomes automatic in your body to know where you are uh, and to read the music, uh, the periods of the music. Subscribe for more free videos. Do it. Do it now. Do it.